Hey guys, me Ronald Chris Tomer here with this Friday morning mountain weather update to radar first. This is our next major storm system. Now moving in to the Pacific Northwest, Northern California, and this one also has atmospheric river moisture uh, with it. And you can tell, I mean, there's just copious amounts of rain and snow here. Probably moderate intensity atmospheric river uh, contribution to this. Um, still have the fire hose of moisture pointed towards Northern California. Eventually, the whole pattern is going to shift to the south, and it will affect Tahoe and eventually Mammoth down the road. But Tahoe, you start to see heavy snow this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow. Key snow level for Tahoe is going to be about 7,000 feet. If you're at that or above it, that's where you're going to see the best snow accumulation. Looking at snow over the high Cascades, the volcanoes, and now moving up into parts of B.C., and also parts of uh, Idaho, especially central and northern Idaho, getting some blow-off and overrun precip with this thing. All right, let me show you the water vapor, and on this, your oranges and reds are your drier air aloft. The moisture's in the whites and the blues, and you can see the spin around our storm system right here with that heavy wave of precip moving um, through the Pacific Northwest, Northern California. It is hooked up uh, to the, to the uh, atmospheric river flow, and you can see how it's just sort of um, entraining that moisture, bringing it in like a fire hose and slamming it up against the terrain features of the west coast. Now behind this thing, there's also another little area of circulation right here. That will come in behind this. Um, so everything's lined up and the atmospheric river will last through probably early tomorrow morning and then it will start to, um, it will start to uh, cut off, it will start to curtail. Um, okay, let me show you my bullet points this morning. Pretty simple stuff. Modern intensity atmospheric river continues. Three storm systems total. I talked about this last night. It's down from the four to five that looked like it might be affecting us through like the end of the month. Now we're down to three. And by the time we get to the third storm, the storm track is really beginning to shift to the south and it may be out of the Tetons and maybe really aligning with Nevada, California, Utah, and Colorado primarily. Um, and then all these will deliver snow to the interior, 1123 through 1128, especially from California to Nevada, to Utah, to Colorado. Okay, here's my key snow timeline. Best odds of snow, Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Tahoe, and Interior, BC. So for example, in the Wasatch, you've got light snow accumulation, maybe light to moderate, coming afternoon 1123 and 1124. Your heaviest pocket of snow now looks like it's gonna come 1126 and 1127. In Colorado, you've got light snow accumulation, light to moderate, afternoon 24 to 25, and your heaviest is also 1126 to 1127. Let's hone in, let's drill down just a little bit. Here's Alta, Utah, forecast mediogram. So here we are on the 22nd in this column. There's the 23rd. There's Sunday the 24th and early Monday the 25th. So you look down here for Alta, this is about 9,000 feet. Um, and your snow increases late on the 23rd into the early uh, portions of the 24th, looking for about five inches out of this first wave of snow. And keep, keep in mind, your heaviest snow is off of this forecast chart on the 26th and the 27th. So you can't see it yet, but we'll get an initial wave of snow late 23 into 24 of about five inches, four and a half, five, maybe six inches in a couple of spots. Temperatures today are gonna be pretty warm, about 41 at 9,000 up there. Uh, 36 tomorrow, and then cooling down as that snow comes in. Humidity increases. It's basically a cold front that will turn the wind. Um, so that's Alta, Utah, and applicable to snow. Snowbird and a lot of solitude in Brighton. Um, let me take you into Colorado. Snow mass in the West Oaks. So this is relative humidity over the next 72 to 80 hours. It's a forecast through all the vertical layers of the atmosphere and timelines at the bottom on this time height forecast. You read it from right to left and it's very dry across Colorado. Today, tomorrow, then the moisture starts to increase late on the 24th into the 25th. That's, a, that's the initial wave of light to moderate snow accumulation. Heaviest comes after this. It's on the 26th and the 27th. A couple of snow forecasts across Colorado. So here is snow mass, and you'll notice the snow comes in late on the 24th and early on the 25th, looking for about two, three, four inches of accumulation with this first wave. There'll be much more accumulation with the second wave, 26 and 27. This is Loveland Ski Area. A bit more accumulation up on the Continental Divide here, looking for about four, maybe four and a half inches um, late on the, uh, the 24th on Sunday into early Monday. And again, heavier accumulations come after this. Okay, let's look at the jet stream forecast. So this is close of business today. You can see the big trough, the jet running right perpendicular to the coast. 
uh, helping to crank out a lot of this heavy snow. Okay, so by Saturday, late in the day, there's your pattern. And by the 24th, now the jet's starting to sink a little bit further to the south, bringing a lot of Tahoe and eventually Mammoth into the equation and starting to line up the flow into parts of Nevada, Utah, and also Colorado. Here we are on the 25th. Look at the next jet streak moving through California. That'll bring in the next storm system. 25, 26, there it is, 27. So a pretty heavy period right there with good alignment through parts of uh, Utah and Colorado. Um, okay, let's look at... Uh, Thursday. Now we start to see things settle down a little bit by um, the end of the month. And here's the first of December um, and pretty much high pressure ridging across the West Coast at that point. Forecast radar and satellite. Looks like this this afternoon. There's our storm system. You can see the spin off the Pacific Northwest Coast. And that snow starts to move south and targets a lot of Tahoe by this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow. And then it hits Mammoth. By tomorrow morning, you've got snow down across the southern Sierra and a lot of blow off in the parts of Idaho and northwest Montana, B.C. getting some snow. Um, here's 1123 late in the day. 1124 by the morning, we've got snow stretching out, targeting a lot of Nevada, the Wasatch, the High Uintas, some in the Tetons and Big Sky, and just starting to pick up in parts of Colorado especially the central and northern mountains. So there's, there it is through the 24th. And again, that's a light to moderate accumulation. The next storm system will bring quite a bit more. Here it comes coming out of California. And look at the, uh, it's a much better flow here. The moisture is higher. <laughs> and you've got snow through a lot of the Wasatch, High Uintas, Tetons, snow back in the Sierra, snow building through a lot of the zones of Colorado. This is 26. Here is 27. Um, moderate to heavy snow continues across the Wasatch, the, possibly the Tetons, and a lot of Colorado into the uh, 27th of the morning there. Continues in Colorado with snow for Denver by that afternoon, and uh, then the storm system moves away by the 28th. And then that's kind of it for a little while. I mean, there's little pieces of moisture, but nothing terribly organized. And there we are by December 1st. All right, snowfall, my forecast, all of today through tomorrow. Most of the snow is going to be running through Tahoe and eventually Mammoth. A lot of that is uh, tonight, tomorrow, through Tahoe. And again, 7,000 feet. you got to be at or above that. Otherwise, looking at probably 6 to 11 through Sun Valley and Brundage and potentially big numbers up around Whistler. Final time period. This is 1124 through uh, the 1st of December. Still some leftover snow. Could see uh, possibly a foot or more across Mammoth during this final time period. And that happens you know, a lot on the 24th, essentially. Looking at 15 to 20 inches through the Wasatch, probably 6 to 12 across the Tetons and Big Sky. And then, of course, Colorado still looks good, still looking at potentially 1 to 2 feet of accumulation across Colorado. I don't see any 3-footers anymore, but 1 to 2 feet right around Loveland, A Basin, Continental Divide, up to Winter Park, Eldora, Steamboat, Keystone, Summit County, all of I-70, back to the Oaks, Aspen Snowmass, down into the, uh, the San Juans, one to two feet of accumulation, and a little bit of snow from northern New Mexico, but not looking at a whole lot in this update. So again, here is the first period, all of today through tomorrow. Um, a lot of it is in California and across the northern tier, and then we start to see the pattern shift to the south, and that brings the accumulation straight through a lot of uh, Utah and also flush into Colorado. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this uh, morning mountain weather update on this Friday. I hope you have a great day. Take care and thanks for tuning in here. Appreciate it.